Hey guys, welcome to our channel. Please click the subscribe button and click the bell icon and never miss another update from Almighty Java. In this video, we will see how to optimize the JWT code which we wrote as part of the previous video. As I said earlier, we will try to upgrade the code and try to remove the unwanted code if it is not required. And if you have not watched the previous video, then please watch it. Now without doing any delay, let's start the video. The first thing, let's upgrade the JWT dependency version. Here you can see we are using 0.7.0. .0. Now let's check the latest version of JWT. So as per this website, latest version is 0.9.1. So let's use this one. See, it is downloading. It is not showing any error. Let's run the application and we'll see is everything working fine or not. Server started without any error. Let's check the basic flow. See this URL we cannot access without token. So even now also it is giving the error response. Let's generate the token. Token generated successfully. Let's use this token and try again to access the book URL. See, it is working. So we updated the dependency version and it is not impacting anywhere. Now let's open the JWT token provider class. Here you can see we are using the secret key directly. So instead of using this place, better we should keep this in application properties file. Now let's read this JWT secret key using value annotation. Here we use token validity only for the 36 seconds. So instead of 36, let's change it to 2 minutes. Okay, so these small changes are done. Now let's open the user resource IMPL class. As you can see here, we are just using the authentication manager authenticate method. Even this method returns the authentication object. Let's hold the returned value. Now let's add a simple condition. So inside the authentication class, there is a method called is authenticated and that returns true or false. Let's move this condition inside the try block. If the user is authenticated, then only execute this code. So move this code inside the condition. And along with token, let's add some more details as part of the response like name and authorities. Now for the exception case also add some error response. And like we moved the success response inside the condition then at the end let's return the null. Now this method is perfect. I hope you understood the changes. Let's execute the user authenticate request. Here you can see it is returning some extra details like name and authorities. Add some more modification in JWT token filter class. Change the scope from protected to public. Here remove this validate token check. You can see here this body is returning the claims. So instead of boolean let's return the claims. And change the method name from validate token to get claims from token. Now add some more changes in the do filter internal method. So if the token is not null, let's call the get claims from token method and pass the token. This method is returning the claims object. Then hold the claims. Now we have the object of the claims. So using this claims, let's get the expiration time and compare with the current time. So if this condition passes, then only process the blow code. So let's move the security context code inside this condition. So like we added two checks. So if token is null, then it will not proceed. And if token is expired, then also it will not execute this code. And here, instead of passing the token, now let's pass the subject, which we can get it from the claims. Now let's add the required changes in the get authentication method. 
so the subject is nothing but the username so replace the method variable now no need to get the username like this line so now let's see what is implementation is there for username password authentication token class here you can see this except three parameters like the principal which is nothing but the username credentials which is nothing but the password and authorities that we are already passing so here let's pass the proper value see now it is clear to understand add the remaining changes in jwt token filter class let's add the condition as we added in the user restored impl class move this security context code inside the if let's move this try catch also inside the if let's add the else condition here let's add some info log any request for any resource it will be passed through this do filter internal method so first time when the token is null then else condition will execute so let's add some simple message okay so all changes are done server restarted let's execute the user authenticate request so in this case it will execute the else block here you can see the log change the credentials from user to admin see here authorities array is keeping the two values role admin and role user now let's execute the books request see everything is working as expected I hope whatever changes we added or modified is clear for you. I checked in my changes. I will show you from where you can find these. See here are the changes. I hope you got some more clarity about GWT. That's it for this video and thanks for watching.